Welcome back to Elevate. My name is Blessed Ivan Humza Amoti. You can call me Blesso, Blessed Ivan. I'm excited to be sharing in the word with you. Like I've always told you that in my in my mind, the word is like an elevator. That regardless of where you're coming from, regardless of how broken, beaten, bruised you are, regardless of who you are, regardless of where you were born, regardless of what you have or do not have, once you step into the elevator, it just does its job of elevating you, moving you from level to level to level to level. And so welcome to your time of elevation with Papa Blesso. I'm very, very excited that you're tuned in and I know we are going to have a swell time together. Can we pray and we continue hearing the word? Father, thank you for this opportunity that we have to listen to your word. Thank you that the entrance of your word gives, brings light and gives understanding to the simple. And so we receive understanding, we receive light, and we receive wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. So, the last episode, I remember telling you that uh, this, this series was born um, out of a statement I had from my very wonderful anointed pastor, Apostle Moses Mukisa, of Worship Harvest Ministries, when he said that Jesus is not just an example for us, but is an example of us. But when we look at Jesus, we should not be just wowed by everything that he has done. Of course, everything he did is amazing. I mean, I don't know any, any other person that is as amazing as Jesus. But we shouldn't just be left in the amazement and wonder of what Jesus did and who Jesus is. We should understand that Jesus calls us to do the same, to be the same in our world today. So Jesus is an example, not only for us, but an example of us. And so that led me to study the book of Matthew where I was sharing. Last week we shared from uh, Matthew chapter 1. You can check the episode if you missed it. Today we are continuing with Matthew chapter 2. And in Matthew chapter 2, I would like us to dwell on, I mean, there is a lot to cover, but I would like us to specifically pick out one aspect about Jesus. And of course, the story in Matthew chapter 2, right before the scripture we'll read, uh, I think we'll start in about verse, um, we'll start at verse 13 and continue, continue all the way to the end. But just before verse 13, what is happening is that Jesus is now born. And after Jesus is born, some wise men from the east receive a star. The star is directing them to where Jesus was born and so on. They are way there. They meet Herod, a king at that time uh, around the regions of Bethlehem. And so as they meet Herod, they are telling him about a king, a king of the Jews who has been born. And Herod, um, I mean, he's, he's plotting something dangerous, but he... He asks them to go and see Jesus. He asks, them to, he asks them to go and see Jesus and come back and tell him where Jesus is. And Jesus is pl plotting something sinister. So they go, finally find Jesus, the baby, in a manger with Mary. They bow down. They worship him. They give him gifts. Isn't it amazing that these people recognized who a person was in the spirit? But they recognized Jesus when he was still a baby. That's amazing. But they would be able to see beyond the natural person, beyond the, the natural casing of the person and know that in this person is greatness, in this person is a savior, in this person is God that is going to change the world. You see, that is a very important tool in life. The ability to recognize people and receive them for who they really are. And we'll talk about that later as we continue in the scriptures. But I found that really, really interesting to the point that they even gave him gifts. And so the, the wise men return. Uh, and as they return, this is what happens in verse 13. The Bible says that now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, uh, and stay there until I bring you word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. 
And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and all its and in all its districts, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they were no more. So what is happening here is that um, Jesus has been born. And of course, it's been noised about everywhere. But look, there is someone who has been born who carries a special assignment. This person is not just normal. He's not just appearing to just build another statistic on earth. No, he has an assignment, and that assignment is not small. And because of the greatness that Jesus carried, adversity rose. There was adversity because of the greatness of Jesus. That's why the, the scripture says that in verse 13, that Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. I know, of course, Herod wasn't working alone. I, I know that there were other forces at work, maybe the devil, maybe his ego, maybe his worries. But he wanted to destroy Jesus because of the greatness Jesus carried. Look, it's not because Jesus had done anything. Jesus was an innocent baby, young boy, just born innocent. You know how we look at innocent children. Just look at the baby, innocent, harmless. And yet, in the spiritual realm, it wasn't just an innocent baby. That's a thing that the wise men realized. But once Jesus stepped onto the scene, he did not only attract ardent admirers, but he attracted passionate adversaries, people who are willing to just destroy Jesus. They are like, we know you have come. We know greatness is here. We know you're here for a purpose, but we must destroy you because that purpose is going to change the outlook of planet Earth. It's going to change the face of the Earth. And so that is the scenario with Jesus, born at a time, born in a season, for a reason, for a great reason. And so he begins facing adversity. I've come to learn that no great man can escape adversity. That in everyone who, everyone who is in an environment of greatness, they will always face adversity. And that's the way it is all, all through scripture. From Adam and Eve, Adversity, the serpent. Come to Joseph, adversity because he was because the enemy knew that he was going to become a prime minister of Egypt to rescue the Israelites and save them from dying in the drought. That was his purpose. So he sought to destroy him, even by his own people. Because of the dreams he had, so they sought to kill him, then they sold him into slavery, he's in Potiphar's house, then he's in prison. Then he's facing all this adversity because he's a great man, because he carries a great purpose. Think of Moses. Think of Joshua. Think of Samson. Think of Elijah. Think of David, destined to be a king of Israel. And yet Saul is seeking to spear him on the wall. I mean, he's going through, I mean, his children are trying, one of his children is trying to take over his throne. People, are, they, they generally want to destroy him. But it is not just him they are fighting. They are fighting his purpose. Because they know that once we let this man live and he fulfills his purpose, we are finished. And it's the devil fighting. Because the Bible says that the enemy comes not but to steal kill and destroy. So because the devil is a spiritual being, he knows, he knows that once you surface on earth, God has appointed you for a purpose. And so he will do everything in his power to distract you, to destroy you, to persecute you. Apostle Mose wrote a wonderful book called Call to Greatness, where he asserts that every one of us, every one of you that is listening to me right now, you are called to greatness. And one of the chapters he writes in there is that uh, everyone that is called to greatness will be persecuted for their greatness. I can tell you that maybe you're going through all the adversity you're going through right now. 
because of the greatness that is on the inside of you. Because of the purpose that you have been called to fulfill on this planet Earth. Maybe that is why you're going through a lot of the adversity you're going through. Maybe that is why people are trying to fight you left, right, and center. Maybe that is why you're being uh, unfairly treated at work. Maybe that is why your marriage is going through what it is going through. Apostle's marriage, Apostle Mose and Pastor Ari's marriage, was nearly destroyed in their first three years because the devil could see. But when these people succeed in their marriage, many marriages are going to be saved. And so they went through a, a point almost near divorce. Almost near divorce. It wasn't because, I don't think it's because they were bad people. No, it is because the enemy could see. I mean, what had Jesus done? Nothing. But the enemy could see the greatness of Jesus and so he sought to persecute him. And that's the same thing that happened with Apostle Mose and Pastor Ari with their marriage. That's the same thing that happened with me when I wanted to commit suicide when I was 14 years old. And the enemy tried to lie to me how I am worthless. I'll never measure up to anything. No one loves me. My family does not care about me. My f Can you imagine? 14 years old. And so I wanted to take my life. Thank God for a gentleman called Rema Smart who came and preached the gospel to me and I gave my life to Jesus. Yeah. But you see, I want to tell you that like Jesus, that we've read about in the scripture, who started facing adversity, who faced adversity, maybe you are facing adversity today because of the greatness that is on the inside of you. Remember I told you in the first, in the first episode that you, you, you were born in this season for a reason, that you are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. His workmanship created Christ Jesus for good works that he prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. And I can tell you, the devil is aware that you are a great person. The devil is aware that you're destined for greatness. Some of you are even still students and you've been struggling with tuition. You're struggling with academics. You're struggling with different things. You are born in extremely hard circumstances. I can tell you, don't quit. Don't quit because there is greatness on the inside of you. And that is why you're going through a lot of the adversity that you're going through. Like Jesus, everyone destined for greatness will go through adversity. And the beautiful thing about this story is that even when Jesus went through adversity, the adversity never destroyed him. The enemy wanted to destroy him. Sadly, though other people were killed, people around him were killed, other children below the age of 10, below the age of two rather, male children were destroyed in the whole region. But I can tell you, Jesus, he was not destroyed. Of course, now you can choose. That's why, that, that's why it's important to see yourself the way Jesus is. Yeah. You can choose either to be amongst the male who are destroyed, of course you will not be there, or you can choose to, be, to say like, ah, Jesus faced adversity and he was never destroyed. God rescued him from the adversity. And I can tell you, God is going to rescue you from whatever adversities you may be going through right now. It may be battles with your health. It may be financial battles. It may be marital battles. It may be battles at work. It may be battles in ministry. It may be battles maybe with your speech, with your, I don't know, whatever it is. I can tell you that God... The God we serve is more than able to rescue you from all those battles because he knows that he created you for a purpose and all those things won't destroy you. He says that he that started the good work in you will bring it to its fulfillment, to accomplishment. Yeah. It doesn't mean there won't be trouble. No. There will be trouble, but God will rescue you from all the trouble. Jesus told his disciples that in this world you'll have many troubles. Adversity is guaranteed. Guaranteed. And he said, be of good cheer. Because I have overcome the world. And because Jesus has overcome the world, you too are going to overcome the world. You too are going to overcome the world. Let's read your scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I need to leave this here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, um, verse 8 and 9. It's one of my favorite scriptures that 
that carries me through adversity. That carries me through adversity. Um, just about to find it. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. And verse 8 and 9. But before I read the scripture, another thing came to my mind. I remember Andrew Womack saying that if 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 um if you are if you have never run into the devil, hmm, you're probably going in the same direction with him. If you've never run into the devil, you're probably going into the same direction with him. So if you've run into trouble, eh, the next time you run into trouble, just begin rejoicing. Yeah, just begin saying, God, I thank you that I am a great person, that I'm w- not walking in the same direction with the devil. I know he wants to try and destroy me, but see, I thank you for the greatness. Because everything worthwhile is up here. Only dead fish swim downstream. Everything else worthwhile is upstream and you'll face adversity as you go up. But thankfully, like for Jesus, you will not be destroyed. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, he says, we are hard pressed on every side, but yet not, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. In despair, yeah. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down but not destroyed. That's you. That's you. Whatever it is that you're going through is not going to destroy you. It's going to make you a better person. It's going to make you a, a, a stronger person. And it's look, it is not going to destroy you because God still has a purpose for you to fulfill on earth. Yes, you are still here. You still have a life to live. You still have many souls to save. You have many businesses to start. You have many lives to change. You have many churches to build and plant. You have many disciples to make. You ain't going nowhere yet, regardless of what it is that you're going through. Yeah. He says in Psalm 27, I read you Psalm 27. He says in Psalm 27, David writes and says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He says, when the wicked came against me, when the wicked came, in other words, it's like you're guaranteed the wicked will come. But he says, when they came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, the Bible says that they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I'll be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And he says, for in the time of trouble, hmm, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And he says, and now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. And he says, therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle, I'll sing, yes, I'll sing praises to the Lord. That is your testimony. Regardless of the trouble that you're going through, regardless, I, I need you to know that you are a great person. That is why you're experiencing adversity and persecution and all those things. It's because of the greatness that you carry on the inside of you. And secondly, I need you to know that God is not going to just watch you get destroyed. No, he loves you so much. Yes, he loves you so much. I can tell you he's not the one sending you all the trouble. No, because the enemy comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. If you're a good parent, you don't inflict sickness on your children because you want to teach them a lesson. Because I know some people who come from a school of thought where they say, ah, you see, God, God has sent me this sickness. God has done this such that he can teach me a lesson. No, 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 please, please. He's a good, good father. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above, from him. Yeah, but w- w- there is an enemy. We live in a fallen world. There is an enemy who wants to destroy you. Who does not wish you well? Who feels bad whenever he sees you? Because you're created in the image of God. Because he sees what he could have been if only he had still obeyed God. Yeah, but he knows he's jealous. He has a lot of jealous in his heart. And so he's out. He's looking for who to devour. And so he will come to steal your purpose, to steal your joy, to steal your peace, to steal your assignment, to kill and destroy it. 
but I can tell you. Mm, he's not going to succeed. He won't. He won't succeed. Because like, he never succeeded with Jesus in the scripture that we are reading right now. He never. Yeah. God provided an escape for him. And I can tell you, I see that God is going to provide for you an escape out of that trouble. Yeah. He's going to provide for you an escape out of that trouble. That trouble won't destroy you. And here we see in verse 13 that an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and gave him instructions on what to do. See, even, even as we conclude, I realize that, I mean, a person could say, but this is the son of God. Why didn't he fight? Why didn't God send an angel? Eh? And when they are sending those guys to fight, why didn't, God, why didn't God send one angel like this and just destroy all those soldiers? Or stop Herod? Why didn't God do it? I mean, there's a time in the Bible, I was reading the book, I think, of Jeremiah, where he sent an angel and he destroyed 185,000 people, enemies, in one go. So why didn't God do it? You see, at times, we want to assume the place of God. Hmm. At times, we want to, to assume the place of God. We... We want to have everything figured out. Okay, we want to cross every, every T, dot, every I in our lives. But you see, there is a reason you and I are not God. There is a reason he is God. The day you figure out God, you will become the new God. Yeah. The day you figure out God, you will become the new God. In this scripture, I see an aspect of, of God that is interesting. Because an angel appeared to Joseph. And he tells him, do you know what? Herod wants to destroy the children, including Jesus, but we are not going to just keep Jesus here to hang out and fight. No, you're going to live and go to Egypt. There was wisdom right there. At times, God's answer to your adversity is an answer that seems unusual. Like, God, but you're all powerful. Why haven't you taken away this boss who is afflicting me? Ah. Maybe that's not the answer he has for you at that point. Maybe the, the, the answer is not for him to take away the boss. Maybe the answer is for you to leave the workplace. I mean, Joseph had to live with the children, but they had to hear God. They had to hear God. The thing I'm trying to draw you to is that even when you go through adversity, it is important for you to pray and try to make sure you hear the voice of God. Because the Bible says of the Israelites that they, God told them that they would hear a voice behind them saying, this is the way, walk in it. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 that trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, including in adversity, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. At times all we want is for things to go away. At times all we want is for certain scenarios to go away. And yet God at times is like, no, 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 no. The solution for this is this. Like in this instance, the solution was get out of Israel. Go to Egypt. Be there until I tell you to come back. Sometimes the solution is to hide. Yeah. Sometimes the solution is to keep quiet and not to fight. Sometimes the solution is to fight. There are times God told them to go and fight their enemies. The children of Israel. Sometimes the battle strategy is singing. Sometimes the battle strategy is shouting. Sometimes it is silence. What I'm trying to draw you to is that learn to hear the voice of God in the midst of the adversity. Because like the psalmist says in Psalm 23 that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you're with me. You are walking through the valley of the shadow of death but you're not fearing. Why? Because he is with you. Yes. Because he will lead you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So child of God, I'm here to encourage you. That one, whatever adversity you find yourself in, huh, should confuse God the enemy. Yeah. When you find trouble, begin singing and dancing. Yeah. Shouting, saying, I ha. Thank you, Jesus, because I am a great man. Thank you, Lord, because I am a great man. I know that is why the enemy is trying to come and steal my joy. That is why he's trying to throw depression on me. That is why he has caused certain people to quit on me. That is why he has caused certain scenarios not to work. 
but I thank you, God, because those are all indicators that I am a great person. And so, Lord, thank you that I am your workmanship. I'm created in Christ Jesus for good works, and I know there are good works you've prepared for me. The enemy will not destroy me. The enemy will not stop me. The enemy will not distract me with pain. For sometimes pain can become a distraction on, on your journey. I will keep moving on. I'll press toward the mark of my high calling. Yeah. So the enemy is so confused. Like we just sent the pain to this person. We just sent disappointment, depression, death to this person. Why are they rejoicing? Because you know there is greatness that is coming. And then to always remember that no matter how bad the situation is, God is more than able to deliver you from those situations. And I see God's hand delivering you from whatever situation you've been going through. I see his hand delivering you. I see him hiding you under his tabernacle, in his tabernacle, under his wings. I see him covering you, rescuing you. Because the Bible also says that to him belong the escapes from death. So I see God causing you to survive death, to survive the traps of the enemy. Yes. And how are you going to do that? By being a prayerful person. Because in prayer, you receive instruction. You receive the word of God that elevates you above every circumstance, elevates you above adversity. And I'm not saying that once you overcome this level of adversity, there will never be adversity again. No, there might be more adversity, but you can rest assured God will rescue you. As we've learned from Jesus, because Jesus is an example of us. He's a great man. He, he had done nothing, and yet he faced adversity. So they want to encourage you that God is with you, that God loves you, that you will overcome, that you are more much more than a conqueror. Don't quit. Don't allow the destruction and the, uh, 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 yeah, the destruction of the enemy. Don't allow it. God loves you. God is there for you. You are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loved you. We'll end it here for now and we'll continue with our series again. But before we close, I would like to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus. Look, it's the best decision you'll ever make in your life. It's the best decision I've ever made in my life. To receive Jesus, the one who loves you, the one who cares for you, the one who gave his life for you. And so if you're there and you'd like to give your life to Jesus, just say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Today, I give my life to you. I believe that you are the son of God. And I confess today that you are my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and do something significant with my life. I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are born again. Welcome to the family of God. It's a number that will run on your screen. Please contact us on that number. We would like to pray with you. We would like to plug you into a family. Just let us know that you gave your life to Christ. And if you've been going through any form of persecution or adversity or what, I pray. I pray that God will comfort you. I pray that God, if it is to take away that adversity, I declare that it will go in the name of Jesus. If it is, if it is to take you away from the adversity, I declare that God will give you the wisdom and the strength to move away from the adversity in the name of Jesus. If it is to fight, I declare that God will give you the strength to fight. For sometimes you need to fight. Like the children of Israel, when they went to, promise, to the promised land and they met enemies there, they didn't run away from the promised land. They had to fight and possess their territory. Sometimes you have to fight. To fight in prayer. To fight with generosity. To fight with speaking words of life. To fight with goodness. To fight with love. Yeah. Sometimes that's what you need to do. And God might not take away the adversity, but he wants you to go through it. Because I know that he causes all things to work together for your good. So I declare that you rise above, that you'll be elevated above all adversity by the wisdom of the word of God. 